Voilà, this is, this is the famous article, chat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's not for Unix post, right? To his defense, it's not for Unix post. But this is the one we are all talking about it. Like those bench, I don't know who did those bench. 678%? <laughs> oh, I'm losing my mind, chat. Oh, I'm losing my mind. Okay. Your 4060 t- turned into a 1590 with NT-Sync. It turned into a, a 1990, brother. Because 600% we are like really in the future. It's like a, a, a 13,090. <laughs> It's like, just take off, like, like, this is game over, boys. Salut, everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about the kernel 6.14 and the latest edition called NT-Sync. And oh boy, I've seen a lot of misinformation and we're going to clarify the situation once for all on this channel. Are you ready? Let's get into it. As always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. I believe what is really important to understand is what is really anti-sync and what it provides to the gamer out there. So we're going to be looking at this article from Foronix, from follow discussion from last year Linux Plumber uh, conference, a window anti-synchronization primitive driver has been proposed for the Linux kernel. This driver would expose dev slash anti-sync as a new character device for implementing some of the Windows anti-synchronization primitive directly within the Linux kernel. In turn, this would help with the performance of some Windows game applications running on Linux via Wine and in some cases would mean significantly better performance. So we're going to call it the Win Anti Driver. What is supposed to give us is first performance and Second, compatibility, which is also like super important to say the least. Compatibility. Yes, we did it, chat. <laughs> yes, we did it. So on paper, it should be awesome, right? And one of the biggest, I would say, lie around anti-sync is this graph here. And again, it's not the fault of Foronix. Foronix is always like giving like a lot of like good information. But you have to read the whole article, right? Like, if you just stick to that, you start to comment about the potential improvement, you will be like, bro, this is insanity. Like, I'm playing Call of Duty Race right now at 100 FPS, and if I put the anti-sync driver on Linux, I'm going to get 224? Whoa. But guess what? There is better. If you are playing Dirt 3 at 110 FPS, which is pretty decent, now you're going to get... 860 FPS? Boom! I might have to cut that uh, for the video or not. We'll see. But I don't care, chat. I'm upset. Okay, I'm upset because think about us. I made a video in which I played a game called Battle Beat Remastered. Like, it's one of my go to games those days when it comes to like benchmarking and with my CPU and GPU I have 1100 FPS so what it means if I just look at this graph it's like potentially I could have 8600 FPS boys it's like you install Linux and you are literally ready to go to the moon like, you don't need a rocket ship anymore. You just need the anti-sync driver, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Not exactly. Sorry, guys. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> like, dude, I'm losing my Okay. Well, those numbers, the one I just show you with, uh, you know, 700% increase they are comparing wine versus wine with anti-sync this is the comparison with the 700 percent increase but the reality right now and I'm, i'm gonna write it big reality 
is that you are running a modified version of wine or Proton to run your game. I'm going to write it really big. If you run your game on Linux, you are using a modified version of wine or Proton. And, and why is it so important, guys? Like, why is it so important? Most of the modified wine version, sorry, like my... I, I'm, I'm writing really bad because I'm upset, okay? They include something called F-Sync. Proton include F-Sync. So one, if you are running wine, like base, I will call it base, you are doing it wrong. And nowadays, there, and actually more than nowadays, like if you are using Lutris, if you are using Heroic Game Launcher, if you are using bottles to run your Windows games, I'm not talking about Steam, I'm talking about applications that run based on wine. You should use the actual like modified version of wine, not the upstream one. You had, and it's not, it's not the case anymore. You had wine G. This was what will be running like all the launcher I mentioned before, like wine G and this one include everything. Bam. You, you never run any of your game on wine. Second is like now, this is this is obsolete now, the wine GE, you need to use Umu, okay? And this also include F-Sync, and you know why? Because it's based on Proton. And what is Proton? And now we're going to explain Proton for if you want to launch anything gaming. So Proton is a fork of wine for gaming yes and guess what he include f sync and we have the confirmation of the main dev of SteamOS, which is supervising everything related to linux for gaming at valve and the question was like hey how will anti-sync be supported on the steam deck we already include f sync which should be as fast or faster as anti-sync we developed anti-sync as general solution that will be acceptable in upstream wine, but there is no urgency in including it in the Steam Deck. So, are we gonna get those numbers? Are we gonna get those 600% increase? No, you won't get them. So now let's talk about the information, information all around the place, which is literally saying everywhere. Oh, now anti-sync is gonna be a game changer. Is gonna change your life, and I'm gonna explain like in the, in the conclusion why I'm I'm pretty upset about it, but like let me explain why it's it's totally wrong, and how hard it will be to test anti-sync even if we already did it on this channel. I did it six months ago. I did test it, but how hard it will be for a mainstream a person to to get into this rabbit hole. Let me explain. Now we have six point fourteen kernel out we know the patch is here it's patched but what you need to understand is like you need everything else in the stack to be patched to take advantage of the anti-sync driver which has been implemented in the kernel if you are running wine but guess what you need the one with the nice merge of anti-sync patch has it been patched let's go on the wine repo and check blah 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 we're gonna go down so nothing has been patched. Nothing has been pushed inside the actual wine. You're going to have to do it yourself and put it into wine and compile it yourself. And to that, I would say something really clear. Good luck. So wine is not ready. You can test it. Now I'm going to go a step further and talk about the fact that on Cache OS, six months ago, we tried, we tried anti-sync. And the way it has been done is that the team put the anti-sync patch inside the kernel at the time. I think it was 6.12 or 6.13. I don't remember exactly. And pushed a modified version of Proton. A, a version of Proton in which you could activate anti-sync. And so we did the test live here. And you know what was the result? Zero performance increase. So right now, yes, you have a kernel patched, but you can't really use it. You can't really take advantage of it. You're going to have to dig really deep to make this work. And there is a high chance like the outcome is going to be exactly like what we found out six months ago on this channel. There is zero performance increase with anti-sync. So now the conclusion. Is 
anti-sync a bad thing? I think it's a great thing in terms of compatibility. In terms of compatibility, now you don't have to go through the hassle of F-Sync, which could be sometimes like a little bit like problematic. But in general, it's not what people are saying it's going to be. And my issue with that is that if you promise the moon to the user and you deliver a rock, like it, it, it just suck. It's just the worst PR available for the Linux community and Linux in general. So if you were on the anti-seek hype train, it's time to get out of the train, have a little coffee and relax, okay? And make sure you, you use the right source of information like that you won't waste your time doing extra bench of your machine or just like, you know, thinking that your whole world is going to change because no, you are not going to get 8,000 FPS in Counter-Strike 2. Like it's not going to happen, guys. All right. So that's it. That's all for the little rant. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous. Okay. So guys, did you think we covered everything? I think we did, chat. <laughs> we deserve compensation for frustrated expectation. <laughs> Even little Air Max is complaining in the background, that's right.